Hello, this is Paul Check. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the red, yellow, and green of exercise. Just in case you forgot what we're talking about, I wore a green shirt, and since we have to undulate back and forth in our intensities, I wore some yellow pants so you know exactly what we're doing here. Now, we've covered quite a bit. We've went through the red. We had a nice long video lesson on that. We went through the yellow for 18 minutes of joy and fun. So remember, we're going to talk about the green today. When you're in the green zone, your total score is less than 150. You're what I call all good. I like that. All good. Ready to rock and roll. Ready to rumble. Which is what we want all athletes to feel like before they do any hard training at all, which is rare because most athletes unfortunately don't know how to train or eat or live or sleep. And sadly, most coaches don't either. All you got to do is look at the coaches uh, in general and they look like they need to read how to eat, move, and be healthy and do a parasite cleanse. <laughs> <laughs> so not all of them, of course. So. We've got a couple things to today uh, to discuss today. One of the things I want to remember is, even though it's, I want you to remember, even though you're all good in the green at less than 150, always pay attention to the balance of insulin, adrenaline, and cortisol. In other words, if your cortisol gets high, for example, one of the first symptoms is you start accumulating fat around your belly button. You also start losing muscle definition. With that usually comes cravings for sugar and quick energy. With that comes binge eating and eating garbage and all sorts of things that ultimately lead to blood sugar handling problems. When you activate the sympathetic nervous system because of elevated or depressed insulin levels, you get an adrenaline release because the body thinks it's under a threat, which then triggers more cortisol so you can have a downhill spiral in no time. I watch it happen all the time with athletes, with people, with, you know, this is how I make my living. It's easy to see. Okay? So, remember, catabolic means spending energy. So when you're in the green, you've got energy to spend, you've got resources to spend, but inevitably what happens is people get kind of acclimatized or conditioned to thinking that they're good all the time and they don't pay attention to the fact that they were out partying or at a wedding or they ate a bunch of cake with gluten in it, now all of a sudden they don't feel so good, or they're under pressure because they're studying for an exam in school, or they're going through some kind of a life transition, they keep trying to act out as though they were green in, in their training, but really they're a yellow or a red with their total stress level, which modula, which you know goes up and down day by day. So the key thing is, remember, you can always retest yourself I recommend testing yourself at least once a month, but the secret is to pay attention and be honest with yourself as we will discuss. So let's go through my seven tips for you today on green. One, always stay alert. When you're a soldier, you're trained to stay alert all the time or you end up dead, which means you're not really able to participate much anymore. Remember, being alert means being aware, and aware means being conscious, and consciousness has four qualities that we can access. If you remember my previous discussions in other videos on Jung's Consciousness Compass. So most of us get trapped up in here. Thinking is a very, very dangerous way to decide where you're at on here because thinking is based on ideas usually from other people. Thinking gets you in trouble when you look at a workout somebody else wrote and think, I'm going to do that even though I feel like crap, so I'll just have a five-hour energy, a Red Bull, a monster, or some other silly thing, and try to force yourself into it. But feeling means, what are my values on this? How do I feel inside? Not sense, like uh, I feel hot or I feel cold. That's sensation. Feeling means... I don't feel good about pushing myself that hard today because my value is to listen to my body and what it's telling me is to do some Tai Chi or go for a cold dip or stretch or mobilize. It's not telling me to do the workout on the board. Uh, many people, for example, going to group exercise classes, 
go to green classes, but on days when they're feeling yellow or red, go to a green class. Well, if you go to a green class when you're here or here, guess what? For sure your stress scores are going to go up. And the next thing you know, you got a neck injury, a shoulder injury, an SI joint problem. Your sex drive's gone to hell in a handbag, and you're now having to buy pills just to, you know, enjoy your sex life and all sorts of, you know, social silliness. Okay? So thinking and feeling, sensing, what is my body telling me? Uh, right now, i got a little soreness here in my SI joint in my hip. I was doing a good hard lunge workout, and I just pushed myself a little bit too hard. Normally today I would be doing a good hard workout, but my sensation is, is that I am not fully recovered enough. So I went out and did a light stone workout. That's what sensing means. What, are, what am I feeling in my body? What's it telling me? What is my body saying to me? Intuition is seeing the connections. The connection I see is if I keep pushing myself like I'm green when I feel like this, I'm going to hurt myself. So intuition is, hmm. Is that really a good idea? Someone says, let's go for another 30 miles on a bike ride, but you only have enough water and you don't know where you can get more. Well, your intuition is that might not be a good idea. I might get heat exhaustion if I get trapped out here. So look for the connections that you can't see that aren't obvious. And the way you do that effectively is you practice meditating and listening to silence and being like a snake sleeping with one eye open very sensitive to the environment, doesn't need to look at you, but he hears you coming from a long way because he's relaxed and he can feel the earth shaking very gently. So just remember, to, intuition is like sleeping with one eye open. You're there, but not there. In, but not all, in, all the way in. You're, you're dreaming, but you're awake, okay? And then you let all of these work together to create information that's beyond cognitive thought in and of itself and informs cognitive thought. Two, undulate stresses. We talked about in our last session. If you're a yellow, then you need to go in, a little yellow, in, a little more yellow, in, a little more yellow, in a carefully staged format. So what we want to do is we want to also maintain this cycle of undulation and depending on how fit you are now this could cover everybody from you know the world champion weightlifters to uh, you know high school wrestlers to moms and dads so how you do this is is much more comprehensive than I can do here that's why I have advanced training programs for you to join so we want to undulate red, yellow, and green, which means working in at work in intensity as active regeneration, yellow, moderate intensity, active rest or passive rest. Active rest is doing your sport at a greatly reduced intensity. Passive is doing another activity that does not compete with the movement patterns or the primary muscles of your primary sport. So for example, if you're a weightlifter, Passive rest would be swimming. Active rest would be using light weights at breathing intensities. I talk all about that, by the way, in my last four doctors you'll ever need. And you can learn much more about program design in my program design and advanced program design courses. Okay? So we want to also remember that the undertrained athlete is usually going to outperform an overtrained athlete even if the overtrained athlete has a higher level of skill. When I was a boxer and I trained boxers for the United States Army boxing team and other boxing teams, that was easy to see. You get somebody who's a little undertrained against someone who's overtrained in a boxing match. If the undertrained athlete can weather the storm and make the skilled fighter tired, he might get an unfortunate experience, which is a loss, because once you can't hold your hands up anymore, you can't be so fancy, can you? So whether you're a triathlete, uh, whatever you are, if you're slightly on the undertrained side, you've got reserve, which means you've got energy for your immune system, you've got energy for creativity, for sexual performance. This whole cultural idea we have of just tapping the hell out of ourselves, burning ourselves out, no pain, no gain. 
that's a very, very overused cliche, and it's also usually used very unintelligently, unfortunately. Um, I say instead of no pain, go no gain, train, don't drain. That's Paul Check's answer to no pain, no gain. If you're going to be a Navy SEAL or, or something like that, then go ahead and play that silly game because they're getting you ready to be tortured in a battlefield anyhow. So, you know, once you got half your brain cut out and want to go shoot at people without knowing why, you can go ahead and do that. That's cool. You know, I, 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 bet I did that too. Okay, so body before head guidance. What does that mean? Don't get stuck in ideas. Pay close attention to what your body's telling you. If your idea is you've got to train like some famous athlete and you're not paying attention to the fact that your body's telling you need to sleep, you need to, you know, rest, you need to take cold showers, stretch, mobilize, then you're going to get yourself in trouble. Have a clear dream. The reason you need to have a clear dream is because you need to be able to listen to what your body's saying and be brave enough to use lower intensity training as active and passive rest. If you don't have a clear dream, you don't have a filtration mechanism for knowing which thoughts to believe in. Oh, that guy's getting stronger than me. I got to keep up. Oh, she's looking hot with all that torture in the, uh, you know, hot yoga class. I got to have to do that too, even though your adrenals are exhausted. So once you know what your dream is, you know what your values are for Dr. Quiet, Dr. Diet, Dr. Happiness, and Dr. Movement, and you know when to say yes and when to say no. Without a dream, hey, as the old saying goes, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. Avoid pattern overload. Pattern overload means be careful about exposing yourself to the same movements, same exercises, over and over again. As a general rule of thumb, an exercise program should not be used for more than four to six weeks before being modified significantly. The longer you use any exercise program, the less effective it is because the nervous system and physiological systems adapt to it. So you become more and more fuel efficient every time you do it, basically. So changing programs is necessary to keep the body and the nervous system and the mind growing. I did write an article called Pattern Overload, which is available either at checkconnect.com or at checkinstitute.com in the library section. The article is titled Pattern Overload. So again, make sure you're changing your patterns with enough regularity. If you look at my book, Movement That Matters, it teaches you all about how to choose the right exercises and adjust exercises for your ability. Now, uh, a little concept that I uh, got from Charles Polican when we were working together way back in the 90s is Charles used to call the athletes with high amounts of fast twitch muscle fiber, your sprinters, your, uh, your athletes that are very good at uh, acyclical sports like martial arts. For example, cyclical sports would be swimming, running, or biking. Everything's cyclical. Acyclical sports, hockey, football, basketball, uh, martial arts, most of your athletes that gravitate those, to those sports have a fairly high percentage of fast twitch muscle fiber. They're more explosive. Your salamanders, in Charles's terms, are the people that do better in endurance sports, such as rowing, triathlon, biathlon, i.e. bike run, uh, anything uh, long distance that these guys don't like. So when it comes to adjusting your exercises, so you know how much time to spend in the green, yellow, red, or high intensity, moderate, low, if you will, work in somewhere in between high intensity, there's many ways you can use this concept, then what you'll find is the cats, as an example, if I'm coaching a cat, I wanna give them two high intensity workouts followed by one low intensity workout. Now this is not a fixed ratio. Each athlete's slightly different, psychologically and physiologically. So in general, your cats need more high intensity exercise, more dynamic, they get bored quick, right? So you, if you give them two of the more low intensity endurance type workouts, they're already falling asleep before they get through that second workout and their bodies don't respond very well because you'll probably be over 
stimulating the aerobic system relative to the needs of the cat in cat sports. The psychological profile of the salamander is they get irritated if you keep eat, changing their programs and making them do too many things because they like to stick to the same thing. They're the kind of people that always go to the same restaurants, always sit at the same pot, spot on the table, always buy the same kind of clothes, always drive the same kind of cars, and <laughs> stay forever in the missionary position. Um, so with them, you might go two uh, intensity workouts or one followed by three endurance workouts. Again, these are just numbers to play with, but you have to ask the athlete how they're responding or you, pay, of course, pay attention to yourself because you are the athlete. So again, the cats, higher intensity, usually two workouts relative to one lower intensity. Salamanders, lower intensity, two to three workouts relative to one high intensity. So you could do, so say you got a push, pull in the leg workout, you would do a high intensity push, high intensity pull, low intensity legs, high intensity push, high intensity pull, and then you'd have to switch it up. So you might put a, bit, a day off in there. There's many, many ways you can do this. You can go by volume, you can go by intensity, you can do numbers of workouts, you can do high intensity for push-pull legs, then low intensity for push-pull legs, that would be a 1-1. One, one. You can do high intensity push-pull legs, high intensity push-pull legs, low intensity push-pull legs. So again, you, you, you have to pay attention to yourself, which is why all of this thinking, feeling, sensation, intuition, and other things I'm going to show you in a second are so very important. And you'll find that if you leave somebody in the wrong format for them, or if you give someone too much, either whether they're a cat or a salamander, they do too much high intensity workout, they start having negative reactions to it. They, they don't feel good. They get weaker. They don't feel as motivated. Um, so the body's always telling you, so is the psyche. Next, the turtle outruns the hare. Remember that. The turtle always outruns the hare, which means the person that's consistent with good practices of self-management, diet, and lifestyle factors and takes themselves seriously enough to really participate instead of just being an exercise addict or, you know, a fanatic. You know, fanatics are pain in the ass kind of people. You know, you, you get them reading Bible passages on the street corner and coming up in your face with goji and noni and every other kind of juice that's going to get rid of everything from herpes to hemorrhoids, you know, no one likes a fanatic. So your turtles are the ones that are very consistent, methodical, have a dream, have values, and they're consistent. And the key thing is with the turtle, being fit and healthy is a lifestyle. For the hares, they're kind of flavor of the month people. One minute they're a bodybuilder, the next minute they're a rower, the next minute they're overweight, the next minute they're drugged out and addicted and you know there's no consistency there they're kind of like ADD type personalities so what do we need to do to be a good turtle well one remember before you do any kind of hard training which is classic for the green zone you want to mobilize any joints in your body that have restriction if you look in my golf biomechanics manual don't worry about golf there's a pile of stuff in here for everybody show you a lot of very useful tests for te testing muscles to see which muscles are too short, too long. I have really effective mobilizations using a foam roller, Feldenkrais exercises for a neuromuscular mobilization, and a very comprehensive chapter on stretching. So you have a much more scientific approach to stretching, and everything in here complements my book, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy, but goes beyond it in those areas. So what we want to do then is mobilize because you got to get joints functioning before you can even get in the proper position to do a lot of stretches. So once you mobilize and stretch, you can also roll on a foam roller, which is very, very good self-massage, and it shows you where you're having trigger points develop in muscles, sore areas, and even reflex zones. If you've got my book, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy, on page 121, I put a little diagram for you that's called the piano spine diagram and it shows you which glands and organs are connected to which sections 
neurologically of the spine. And once you know the basic sections of the spine, you know, for example, uh, where that organ reflexes to. For example, a woman's uterus, which is way down in the lumbo lumbosacral region, reflexes to the whole leg region, which is why a lot of women get weak in the legs and unstable when they're premenstrual or having any kind of problems with inflammation in the sex organs. So what I'm sharing with you is if you're starting to have, you roll yourself out, you keep finding the trigger points and sore areas in your legs, and you look in the book, it might be, and it would, it would say, look at your uterus. If you have problem with your abdominal wall or your middle back, you might look at your liver, for example. So it's very easy to see what's going on when you look at the chart and pay attention. So rolling gives you a lot of information. And then if you want, you can go to page 100 or 101 and correlate that with the chakra. And it tells you what psychological themes might be causing you to carry stress in that part of your body. So you're going to mobilize, stretch, roll yourself out as needed to do a little body check. Pay attention to what you're feeling and sensing in this sense and use your intuition to determine whether or not it's a good day to push yourself hard in your training. And if you have any kind of niggling injuries, for example, I told you I got this little niggle that I did to myself most happily. So if I was going to go out and, and try to do some training today, I would use a survival re reflex activation technique, which is a method that I developed years and years ago when I had full head of hair. That was a long time ago. Uh, survival reflex activation means that you uh, challenge your own balance, preferably unsuspectingly. So if you stand on one leg and close your eyes and someone gives you a little bump, that's unsuspected. If you're trying to kneel on a Swiss ball and you're not very good at it, or you kneel on a Swiss ball and close your eyes, as soon as you fire off your reflex centers, it can override inhibitory pathways in the nervous system and turn muscles on that have not been firing properly due to various pains, injuries, illnesses, etc. Typically, you're going to get around one and a half to three minutes of activation, which is usually enough to do a set. You can do those survival reflex activation techniques uh, on your rest periods right before you start your next, and it helps keep muscles active. If you keep having the same muscles shut off, though, you should find a skilled Czech practitioner, uh, even a good exercise coach, to do an assessment on you. The Czech practitioners go all the way up to level four, so the more challenging your problem is, the higher the skill level you're going to need. But you want to find out why muscles not, are not turning on if it's happening with any regularity. We all have muscles that shot off a little bit here and there. A little inflammation in a joint, ate something that's not working for you. But you should not see those patterns consistently or it means something is happening on the inside. You need to be evaluated before you get yourself hurt. Okay. Next is check exercise coach and HLC1. If you want to really learn how to exercise properly and organize your programs and design your own programs so you know exactly what you're doing with intelligence and skill instead of just kind of flying by the seat of your pants, and you want to learn how to master the techniques of a very significant number of useful exercises and learn how to progress people from flexibility and stability to strength to power conditioning safely and effectively, Check Exercise Coach is by far more comprehensive than any other personal training program out there and more holistic. And it's designed by me so that any athlete or individual coming off the street that wants to study the prerequisites and go through the training could learn it. So if you really want to master this stuff, take exercise coach. In order to master the principles of how to eat, move, and be healthy and other diet and relevant other relevant diet and lifestyle factors, three-day course, Holistic Lifestyle Coaching Level 1. All my instructors are absolutely experts at this. Trust me, I trained them and they got worked hard for a long time. It's not easy to be an instructor for me. So check Exercise Coach HLC1. Also, if you want some training and you can't afford to go to Check Exercise Coach, get my Gym Instructor Series. It teaches you exactly how to do many different exercises. My Strong and Stable video series shows you how to mix Swiss ball training and weightlifting and even machines for effective program design. 
And I have a new athlete management class uh, that will be coming out sometime in the second half of the year. And it will be a one-day program that teaches you how to manage all this information and what you need to look for on a daily basis so that you know how to adjust your training to get optimal results. So that brings us to the end. I think we've covered a fair bit. This was part three of the red, yellow, and green of exercise. Green means all good. Pay attention, stay alert, stay alive, be aware. Thinking, sensing, feeling, intuition. Mobilize, roll, stretch, perform. Use survival reflex techniques. Undulate, if you're a cat, do a little more high speed training than you do endurance training. If you're a salamander, do more endurance or aerobic type exercise than you do high intensity. Undulate those, put all that together and you got twisted steel and sex appeal, baby. I'll see you next time.